speak to you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. presence 
to go and proclaim Jesus to the world around us. It may start simply with talking to a friend or a relative, maybe the person in the pew next to you, but out into our community and beyond. To start sharing the good news of Jesus that was born on Christmas Day, but who is still alive and working through each of us through God's Holy Spirit. And Epiphany is the season of the church from now until Lent, the season that leads up to Easter, is a time of proclaiming and of learning who is the Jesus we celebrated just a few days ago, his birthday. Who is Jesus? Now next week, the first Sunday after Epiphany is always the baptism of Jesus. And we will hear words from heaven acknowledging and identifying Jesus as God's Son. And we'll, we'll leave that for next week to talk about that. But we will hear through the season of Epiphany more about Jesus, his ministry, the beginnings of ministry, what he believes, what he taught, the people he called. And Epiphany is a time for us to sort of get ourselves back on track, not just make New Year's resolutions about losing weight, which I noticed I do have to do. <laughs> we need to make New Year's resolutions about getting to know Jesus. We all sort of wander, we wander around, we wander away, we get busy in life, or life hits us in the head, or whatever goes on. And sometimes Jesus gets left behind, almost like how the crash will be boxed away and put away for next year. But Jesus doesn't want that to happen. Jesus wants us to have him in our life every day, every waking moment of our life. He wants us to seek him out in prayer, in worship, but not just in that way, but in action, in living our lives in a way that will glorify Him, that our lives will be an adoration, a bowing down, maybe not in the literal, but in a way that our life reflects the light that came into the world, that our life makes a difference to people around us, whatever that might mean. Feeding the hungry, visiting the lonely, taking a note to someone saying, hey, how are you doing? Whatever it is that we do, to do it in the name of Jesus and make a difference. So as we go through the next few weeks of Epiphany, listen to the stories about who is the Jesus we just celebrated. And even more important to that, not just who is Jesus, but what difference does it make in my life to be a believer and follower of Jesus? In what way can I sort of change my life and model my life after Jesus also to make a difference in the life of other people? Christmas isn't just meant to be a nice family time or story time or entertainment time or gift giving time. It's meant to be a sign to us and to the world that God loves us. The whole story about Christmas is that God loves us so much that he came into this world to bring love and hope, light in the darkness, as we heard on Christmas Eve, Isaiah chapter 9. You know, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. And we heard in today's gospel, not only did a light of some kind guide these men from the east to Jesus, when they got to Jesus, they saw that light. They were within, they were in the presence of God. They experienced the glory of God. And I was like saying to the 830 people, the glory of God, glory is about glory and glorify. 
The glory of God in the Bible is the presence of God. The presence that was in that vision of Isaiah in the temple, in Isaiah chapter 6, or the burning bush with Moses in Exodus chapter 3, and in other times in the Bible where you hear the glory of God. The very glory of God was present in the manger. The very glory of God walked the earth right up to the cross itself. And the glory of God broke out and shone on the day of Easter. The presence, the power, the very existence of God is what the men from the east were seeking. Because why would they go through a journey what they went through? Through dangerous territory, long distance, the cost. With Disney 3, you know, again, we, we like to see the Christmas cards with three guys on camels, eh? And sand dunes through the desert. It was, would have been a huge caravan. There would have been multiple, multiple amounts of people and money involved. Why would they do it? Just to go and see somebody who was born? It had to be significant for them as they understood. Because they also, even though they weren't part of the Jewish religion, they understood prophecy. They understood that the rising of this star, the birth of the new king of Israel, was going to make the difference to all humanity for all time. And that's why they went. So I have a question to all of you. Would you have gone on that journey? Would you have taken that journey, left everything behind, unknown amount of time to travel, not really sure what you were going to see, experience, to hear, would you have done it? Some of you would. Many would wonder, is this something I want to do? And it's a question we should each ask ourselves about our own faith. What is it that we need to realign in our lives to be able to approach that manger? What is it in our lives that we need to do to address the needs of others. What are our priorities? Questions to ask at the beginning of a new year at any time, whether it's in our family, our workplace, our church. But would you have taken that journey? Would you have undergone the uncertainties and the unknowns? Obviously, they did. For whatever reason, they were motivated. And it's a big question, because how often are we asked to sacrifice, to make changes, to seek out the unknown, to reach out to people we don't know, to help those who are victims within our society. And it's easier to say, no, I'm more comfortable with just sitting on my couch watching my TV, being with my friends. Yet God calls us to go out. Now that we have come and seen and celebrated the birth of Jesus, we are compelled to go and proclaim, like the shepherds, like the magi, and others throughout the life of Jesus, who witnessed his miracles, who heard his teachings, we are compelled to go out and tell, to be the light of Christ in the world. So let us use the season of Epiphany to sort of take stock of ourselves at the beginning of this new year. Where are we in our faith? And how can we make a difference? And in what way do we need Jesus to help guide us? So prayer worship, reflection, all of these will maybe help fine-tune what we might be able to do on behalf of Jesus. So let us take time at the beginning of this year, look to the future, how can we be a true light of Jesus to others.
Let's just bow our heads in prayer for a moment. Loving God, we celebrate the wise men, the heavenly light, and their discovery of Jesus, the light of the world. Help us to spread the light of Jesus and to live our lives in accordance with your great commission to go into the world and draw people to Christ, who is our true light and our salvation. Amen.